Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be telling you all about and giving a review of this awesome 1986 Kramer Beretta. Now, I've posted this in a few videos and a few people have sort of messaged me and emailed me asking about the guitar, so I thought I'm just going to shoot a video talking about it, what I think about it, a bit about Kramer Berettas and the history. Stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. In this video then, I'm going to tell you all about this awesome 1986 Kramer Beretta, but if you haven't done it already, click like to like the video, hit subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. Now if you're familiar with my channel, usually I do sort of educational stuff, but I thought it's about time I start doing some product reviews, so I'm going to give you a review of this original 1986 Beretta that I bagged recently off Revib.com. Now I was looking for a pink Beretta for quite a long time. Pink is kind of my go-to colour with kind of these sort of hair metal, glam metal, heavy metal guitars back when I was young and started learning guitar I kind of learnt on a very similar guitar that is not as good but it was like a bright pink shredding mason guitar which I absolutely loved so this is kind of my throwback to my teenage years playing guitar and often as a professional musician you tend to buy stuff for work rather than for fun and this is definitely a bit of both but mainly a fun guitar so before I go into any details I'm just going to play some stuff so you can hear how it sounds <laughs> Okay, that was me just jamming around some sort of classic 80s rock rhythm and honestly I cannot play this guitar with a massive smile on my face I absolutely love playing it it's just so much fun it's absolutely so much fun I love how it feels and I just love how it plays so the Kramer Beretta if you're kind of familiar with this brand of guitars then you'll know about the Beretta the Beretta was kind of designed in conjunction with Eddie Van Halen in around about 1983 and if you turned on the TV back in the 80s you wouldn't have seen a band where a guitarist was not playing a Beretta or at least a Kramer guitar. They were a massive, massive, if not one of the biggest kind of guitar companies for this genre in the 1980s. And the Beretta is probably their most well-known guitar. I know there's a lot of kind of reissue ones now available to the market, but obviously this is an original 1986. So it's a few years after they were first designed with Eddie Van Halen. Now, some interesting features about the Beretta, if you didn't already know this, the headstock kind of gives away the year of the Beretta. When they first were designed with Eddie, they had sort of more of a hockey kind of puck design, just much sort of more softer headstock. This one from 1986 has the pointy headstocks, which they introduced, I think it was like the late 85, early 86, where they moved to sort of the classic, as you always kind of associate with that kind of glam hair metal kind of scene, the pointy headstock. And then after sort of 1986 into 1987, they did actually change the logo a little bit. So if you are looking for a vintage Kramer and you're unsure of the year, a lot can be given away with a headstock, okay? So most Kramers come with a rosewood neck. This is a maple neck, pretty rare. This is another reason why I saw this guitar and thought I have to have this one because I knew it was quite rare. Also the flip-flop pink colour, which this is, is super cool. You can kind of see in the different lights. It kind of changes colour depending on the light. Pretty rare, so that's why I saw this and thought that guitar needs to be mine. Most of them were rosewood necks. They're 22 frets, 25 and a half inch scale, and kind of the classic, most well-known feature about the Beretta is the single humbucker. Now, they've slanted them on the Berettas, and I think that was something they designed with Eddie Van Halen, mainly when they introduced the Floyd Rose. Now, the first Berettas had a Rockinger, I think that's how you pronounce it anyway, tremolo, but I think Eddie wasn't the most fussed on that guitar, and then Floyd Rose brought out this wonderful tremolo system, which they started installing on the Kramers, and it's all to do with the reason why they've angled the pickup like this is to do with the sort of the spacing on the saddles. It's just so the strings really align with the magnets on the pickups, giving it a much more thicker and bright sound. I think it just really improves the tone when the strings are kind of directly over the magnets. Also, just having the one pickup, I have another guitar, Fender Telecaster, where I've removed all the stuff, all the tone, and it definitely changed the sound of the pickups by doing that. So it kind of A-B'd it first with the tone control in and took it out. Personally for me, I felt like the EQ frequency just widened. And I think that's a reason why these guitars sound so, so good is because it's just purely guitar, volume, 
and pickup. There's no kind of stuff, tone controls and all other stuff and loads of wiring to get in the way of any tone. It's just pure, clear pickup signal. That's my kind of view on it anyway. If you people disagree, that's absolutely fine. I'm just trying to think why this guitar sounds so ballsy and so good. And for me, it's a very, very balanced sound. It's really thick, but also has a lot of top end as well. So that for me is maybe one of the reasons why this guitar sounds so punchy. <laughs> Now, obviously, the pickup has a lot to do with the sound, and the pickup in this guitar is a Seymour Duncan JBJ, similar to the JBs, but it was hand-wound by, let me just get the name right, Marcelina Juarez, who is the manager of Seymour Duncan's custom shop. Now, I hope I've got the name right. Apologize if I haven't. Obviously, I'm Welsh, so I'm trying my best to read it. Now, the pickups hand-wound by Marcelina were the JBJ, so that's how you can kind of distinguish between a JBJ and a JB. And I think, again, this is from research. I've not actually tried a JB in this guitar. It is obviously all guitars vary to do with the wood. But from what I'm led to believe, the JBJs have a lot more bottom end and a lot more mid range, so they're a lot more of a punchy sound. <laughs> That definitely sounds punchy to me, really beefy and really, really thick. Now, it's a super high output, being a lot rock pickup, a lot of the rock pickups are high outputs. It's Al Nico 5 magnets in there as well. Super cool pickup, definitely recommend checking it out if you are looking for something to turn your guitar into a heavy metal rock machine. As I mentioned briefly about the neck, most Kramer Berettas were rosewood. And certainly one thing that did surprise me ever so slightly when I got this guitar was it's a bit chunkier than I was expecting. It still plays fast, but it's definitely a bit thick. I think as the 80s went through, certainly from the mid to the late 80s, they made the necks a bit thinner, kind of like some of the modern guitars you sort of feel these days. But I kind of like it. It reminds me, I said, of that other guitar I had, my other 80s rock machine, which unfortunately is not in use anymore because I played one too many gigs on it and I kind of got a bit wrecked. But yeah, this guitar is... It's a meteor neck, which means when you play rhythm, it just feels like you're playing a real kind of thick, heavy guitar. <laughs> I just love playing this guitar. Like I said, I can't not play it without a smile on my face. So that's a bunch of kind of rhythm tones and a bit of the background about the Beretta. I love this guitar. As I said, if you're looking to kind of get one, I definitely recommend it. So moving forward then, let me play some lead stuff on it so you can hear some of the lead tones. For this demonstration, I'm using a Kemper Profiler, so I'm in a totally silent room. And one thing I do notice about this guitar is there's loads and loads of sustain that I'll show as I'm doing. I'll just jam some kind of lead stuff. I'm using a Soldano SL0100 amp for this demonstration. And just before I wrap this video up, I'll do some clean tones and I'll do some different amp sounds as well. But this is me just jamming some stuff to so you can hear how it sounds in a lead environment. <laughs> That was me just jamming around some lead tones. I don't know where I played. Something, I guess, you know, no one's ever going to do Eruption or anything like that, like the late, great Eddie Van Halen. Eruption blows my mind every time I listen to it. And, of course, the bread makes you kind of want to play Eddie-esque. Not that I'm saying I played Eddie-esque at all. I just played some stuff and hopefully it gives you an idea of the solo tones. I mean, hopefully halfway through, I think I played a bend up here. and give you an idea of the sustain. The sustain is really, really good. On this guitar, now I'm in a completely quiet room with no speaker, all on in ears. 
you know, and it's still there. And I find often when using something like a Kemper Profiler that I am in this video, or an Axe FX or one of these units, sustain is always a bit of a challenge because there's no air there's no noise kind of you know going back between the magnet and you know that's kind of what often what sort of causes a long nice uh long sustain or the nice feedback when it goes into that now i don't have that in this room it's completely silent but the sustain is amazing on this guitar i love it anyway so hope you guys like the sound of it too so let's just try some clean tones not that i ever imagine i'm gonna play this guitar clean because it's a heavy metal machine. But let me just play something with a clean-ish sound so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, that's just me jamming on some chords on a clean sound. It sounds really nice, clean. It's really bright. And when you dig in, the notes really, really pop out. So when you accent it, you can really feel that when you're playing. So it's, it's a very musical sounding guitar. I think the pickup adds a lot to that, actually. So if I need to accent the top note, it's really easy. I'm not even picking that hard for it to pop out. So very dynamic instrument. Also, that's going to go hand in hand with the sustain as well. So let me just kick on another type of distortion. As I mentioned, the first amp I was kind of simulating with the Kempo was a Soldano. Let me just do like a Marshall thing, play a bit more rhythm, and then I'm going to wrap this video up. <laughs> With that amp sound, you can really hear the bottom end. It's giving that Marshall kind of thud as well, which is super common in the 80s. So to summarize, I absolutely love this guitar. I love the color on it. I think it looks super, super cool. I love it with a maple neck. It feels amazing to play. The Floyd Rose is really, really good. I mean, I've been battering this guitar now for the duration of this video, and it's held this tune in really, really well. So the tune on is really good, it feels really stable, really, really nice to play, the neck feels great. So if anyone is thinking about buying a 1980s Beretta, I highly, highly recommend it. I guarantee if you get a good one, you'll be like me, you'll be playing guitar with a big smile on your face. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click like to like the video, hit subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and hit that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. There's loads of educational content on my channel, so make sure you check that out. If you want some courses and lessons, guaranteed to help you become a better guitarist, come and check out my guitar school, Fretlix, www.fretlix.com. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you again soon.